right, we're back with the six tips for home buyers. And this one, we had to get some additional information for this one. Uh, we want to make sure that you are checking and understand your debt to credit ratio. This is not your debt to income ratio. That's the amount of debt you have uh, as compared or the ratio of that to your actual income. Because when you're buying a house, they're not going to let you have too much debt. For instance, if you have uh, $3,000 that you make every month, they're most likely not going to want you to go over 40%, 50% of that for financing. So that means you can't have debt that uh, totals more than $1,500 a month. Now that's completely different from what we're talking about here. We're talking about your credit cards, your credit lines, and your charge cards. Charge cards again, and I'm speaking to those on the basic or beginner level when it comes to credit because I meet a lot of customers that don't know what a charge card is. There are some of you that are saying, oh, who doesn't know that? But I've got to speak to everyone, right? So a charge card are cards that you can only use at the store. Those are revolving credit accounts. Credit cards are revolving accounts, and so are credit lines. By revolving, they mean you can pay them off, charge them up, pay them off, charge them up. You can keep revolving those balances. So debt to credit ratio is going to be defined as the debt to income ratio. Well, let's put it this way. Debt to credit ratios, aka credit utilization rate or debt to credit ratios are going to be those balances that you have on your credit cards, charge cards or credit lines that are reporting should not exceed 30%. I always tell people 20 to 25%. It's much safer. All right, your debt to credit ratio, also known as your credit utilization rate or debt to credit rate, generally represents the amount of revolving credit you, you're you using, all right, divided by the total amount of credit available to you or your credit limits. So what's revolving credit? We talked about that, right? Those three things that I gave you. There's a great example here. I'll read this too. Okay, revolving credit accounts include things like credit cards, credit lines, they don't have charge cards, but won't include that either. On the other hand, installment loans, okay, installment accounts, those are accounts that have a fixed payment until you pay them in full, right? Like a mortgage, car loan, personal loan, okay? When they're paid, the account is closed, and it just shows up as paid on your credit, and that's it. The account is closed. Now, you usually get a slight score drop when that happens because you're losing a trade line. Now, let's take an example, which they have here. An example of how a debt to credit ratio may be calculated. If you have two credit lines with a combined credit limit of 10000 and you owe 4000 and one card uh, on one card and 1000 on the other, that's 50%, right? That's a total of 5000 so that's half of your credit limits. So your debt ratio is 50%, and you want to keep that as low as you can. It says 30% here. Everyone that talks to me knows I don't. I can't stand that number because it's too close for comfort. And anytime you go over 30%, even by a small amount, your scores are going to drop. Okay? We're going to look at Credit Karma. Uh, they really give a good look at that. Um, or Experian. Those are, those are really good ways to, to get some examples of a credit report and see how that ratio is calculated. So we're on Credit Karma. Uh, one thing I like is it does keep my client anonymous, so you don't see who this is. Uh, but they give a nice little chart here. And this is the uh, debt credit utilization here. They have different names for it, right? This person is at 3%. So if we want to view the details, you can do this on your phone or on the uh, computer. And let's get a little enlargement here. And you'll see that they have $80 outstanding on their $320, $3,200 limit, right? They consider that excellent because it's way below the 30%, right? So that's like 3%. That's really good. So you you're aren't using too much of your credit lines. And you can see they'll show here there's a $500 limit on Navy Federal. Only 27 is outstanding. And you can go down the list and see how that works. And they're giving you the percentages. This is one of my good clients. I don't want to give you someone with uh, poor utilization, even though that's important. 
I wanted it to be a little bit easier to see what I'm talking about here. So let's take a look at the accounts and see what is actually showing, okay? Okay, so once we get into the report, there's a few things I want you to see. Right here, they're showing when this account is going to be reported to the credit bureaus. On the 7th of every month, it will be reported. And of course, they'll show you the balance. They won't show you the ratio here. They'll show it uh, separately on the other section. Now, um, they do show it down here, though, right? So they'll show you you're at 5% debt ratio, debt to credit ratio. All right, so it'll do that for all the accounts. You know, I can go to uh, several of them here. There's a charge card, right, Macy's? And you can see it's no balance on there, so nothing is affected there. Let's find one with a balance like the credit one here. So that's a 4% usage. It reports on the 2nd. That is not the due date. That is the date that the statement closes. All right, so that's really it. I wanted to give you a good example of how the debt-to-credit ratio works. It's very important. If that is high, it's going to keep your scores down, and it's going to make lenders a little leery of loaning you money because it looks like you're in a little bit of trouble. So that is it for that one. That is our fifth uh, tip for homebuyers. And we have one. Thank you.